All right, guys, welcome back to Total Disclosure. I am super happy today. Uh, I'm joined by one of my good friends, uh, colleagues in the field, and um, he's got something in the works that I'm sure all of our listeners are going to want to be a part of. Um, so we're going to get into all that today with Vinny from Disclosure Team. But as you know, before housekeeping, uh, and today's video is brought to you by Biomind. Uh, it is a uh, all natural, no caffeine added supplement um, that uses lion's mane, um, uh, performance mushrooms, and other uh, great stuff that uh, induces uh, nootropic health. And uh, uh, just it's changed my life, give me a clarity that I've never had before. Um, the links for that will be in the description below. Get 25% off now while you can um, using our link. Like I said, it'll be in the description below. And if you want to help support the channel, uh, become a member, pay what you want. Uh, you get a yearly gift, early access to content like this uh, interview, uh, behind the scenes stuff and all that uh, jazz. So uh, with that being said, let's get this party started. Welcome, Vinny. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, good to see you, Ty. How you doing, man? No, I had a couple of fumbles on the uh, on the intro there. <laughs> hey, I do but, it all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's um, right now, um, as you know, as we're recording this, that um, Peruvian mummy conference is going on. So uh, I'm also like, you know, keep my eye on that, and uh, also, you know, it's 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 a bit it's a big. A lot of stuff's been happening in the UFO world lately. It seems like it's all like dropping at once. Do you find that to be convenient, convenience, or is everyone just like let's capitalize on the timing? Yeah, I think I don't think it's planned or anything. I think it just these things come around and they overlap, or there's things happening all at once. I don't. It's just coincidental, in my opinion. I try not to get too conspiratorial when things you know, maybe sort of look like they, they're coming from a certain planned direction. I just see it as, uh, it's just the way it goes sometimes. Yeah. Um, and, and honestly, if I, if, if you don't mind, what do you think of these, um, of, of those mummies of that whole scenario? Um, because it's not the first time they've been rolled out. Uh, people forget that this is, you know, this is something that was, was rolled out years ago as well. Um, you know, I, I think I can't remember, uh, exactly. Um, but Hi Jaime Musan seems to be uh, deeply involved in this. And, um, as we know, sometimes Jaime's quick to, quick to put things out. So what's, what's your perspective on, on all of it? Yeah, Jaime Massan doesn't have the greatest track record with these types of things. I and mean, we saw something similar at the, uh, uh, was it the Mexican Congress? Congress, in September. yeah. Yeah, and they rolled out these bodies uh, claiming to have had some scientific analysis done on them back at the time. But with anything like this, it's surely it's better for them to sort of get the work done behind the scenes, get it even peer-reviewed, get some uh, multiple scientists from, you know, separate places to put you know to, to corroborate this these bodies wherever they are whatever they come from because they unveil them claiming they're alien mummies but then you know two months down the line we've got other scientists refuting the data and it just seems to be this ever revolving you know back whatever. and forth just, of it, it's yeah and it's i struggle to take it seriously i mean i i keep my eye on what's happening just out of curiosity yeah of course anything, but you know it's just i'm always just geared up to be let down yet again by anything that Jaime Massan touches. I, and, and you know what? Like, I hate to even say that because, you know, when I, you know, Marco Leal, he's a great friend of mine. And um, often I'll be talking to him and I'm just like, Jaime has an audience like Tucker Carlson has here, you know, in Brazil. And a lot of people in South America think that he is a leading expert and that he's, you know, he's truthful in what he does and, and says, and, you know, he's only presenting the facts. And like, there's a lot of people in South America that just don't see through it and, and they take him as an expert. And it's like, ah, guys, like, yeah. I mean, he's got, he's, he's arguably the biggest um, name out of, out of Brazil, out of South America. Um, yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah. Yeah, and so, I mean, look, it's good. It's good that he's bringing the conversation to a, a mass audience. Uh, you know, I, you know, I put my hands up and say that's a great thing. But it's that's the thing is that people will see him as the expert, like you mentioned, and just believe everything he says. They they won't go and do any follow up research or anything. And, and why right. should they? They probably got busy lives, and this is just yeah. something that they they keep an eye on. So I get it, but it doesn't make us look good when we're really trying to dig down to the actual truth of what's happening. Right. And then, and then, you know, a month later you end up with a headline, like, you know, alien bodies found to be chicken bone and, um, other, you know, weird stuff like stapled together. And it's just like, Oh God. Cause, and that's like the part of me that, 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 that that, it, it honestly frustrates me like this phenomenon, what we have going on here, right. As we speak right now, there's an agenda that's being played out. The phenomenon is strange enough. We don't need to hoax. It's strange enough. Like the real stuff is, is, is there. It's, it's, and I get it. Like the content creators need to content create, but it's, let's focus on that, that percentage that will advance the conversation. And your conference is a great, um, it's, it's a great new thing that's evolving where like the Saul foundation where you had leading scientists researchers people that are very serious about this topic um giving lectures and 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 uh, being open and transparent about what they're doing to advance the topic so who are some of the people that that you have lined up to speak yeah, so just before I, I list some people, what I wanted to do was put together a, a, a virtual event where people can come and hang out, you know, on on Zoom. It's all through Zoom, but hang out in the same room as these speakers, right. you know. And I, I've been involved in one of these before. Um, this is all under Richard Dolan's Upgrade the Debate event series, and they're a really great way of of being a bit more interactive with these kind of things. And so I wanted to put something together that focuses on research, but not just as a UFO researcher. I wanted to get people on the journalistic side of things, the scientific and academic side of things, and kind of put it all together and really focus on that and and give them a platform. So um, I I guess I started off, I wanted the science thing. So I I straight away, I contacted Avi Loeb. I've got a good friendship with Avi. So, you know, he graciously accepted. And then Beatrice Villarreal was someone who I spoke to recently on my show um and she i think she's great uh, so i wanted her there so the, those are two real stand-up scientists and then uh, obviously christopher sharp at the liberation times his journalistic integrity i think he does a fantastic work so i invited chris to come along to talk more about you know what he does and how he does it uh we're going to be doing a q a with chris so people can really ask the questions that they want to ask to Chris, you know, Chris has got some fantastic sources out there that, that he kind of gets these scoops all the time. So we're going to dig into that. And then my good friend, Carl Andres and Carl, the crusher, as people may know him, he's done a, a yes. lot of boots on, uh, done a lot of boots on the groundwork, at, uh, pr- primarily at, um, Mount Wilson, Mount Wilson. Ranch, right? Yeah. So he's actually going to be at Mount Wilson at the event. He's going to come in live from Mount Wilson, give everyone a live on the ground tour, answer questions, talk about the latest on his investigation. So that's something a little bit different again. That's amazing. Yeah. So really, really wow. happy with that. So yeah, that's, live that's from you know, <laughs> live from Mount Wilson Ranch, man. Yeah, so that, I, mean, I mean that'll be fun because that's on par with with Skidwalker. I mean, th- let, let's let's make no mistake about it. Um, there's there's yeah. clearly something going on in in um in at these, I guess you know what we call them in the in the UFO communities, uh, hot spots, right? So there's these spots, and and it, you know obviously. Uh, everyone's like, oh, why is it always a ranch or like, uh, well, it, it's, it's in this case, it just so happens to be, you know, a ranch as well, but it's not always a ranch. Um, in this case, yes, but not in, you know, in a lot of cases. So, um, this sp- specific ranch, um, I, 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 cause I've had Carl on the show, uh, as well. He's a, he's a good friend is good friend of the show and uh what he's been doing is amazing that's that's awesome what a unique uh unique thing yeah absolutely so and then i've got danny sheehan 
who's going to be giving a presentation. You know, Danny's, you know, right at the forefront of a lot of what's happening on Capitol Hill right now. He's speaking with, you know, the committees uh, on both sides. So I just, I wanted to bring all of these different people from slightly different areas of the subject together uh, to give the attendees there something, you know, a whole weekend of, uh, of just really interesting information and opportunities to to ask right. their questions and stuff. So I'm really looking forward to it. You know, it's been a, a lot of work putting it together, a lot more than I anticipated, but I'm working with a great team who do this. This is this is what they do. They do these event series and that. So I'm really glad that they allowed me to to be a part of that and do a disclosure yeah. team uh, first conference. Right. Yeah, no, no that's, that's absolutely amazing. And, um, you know, uh, with Avi, Avi Loeb, um, especially, um, with his Galileo project, I mean, I'm in Boston, right? So, you know, he, his, he's literally, I go to Harvard probably two to four times a week, uh, for my job. And like, there are so many times where I just want to go to like wherever his office is and just knock on the door and be like, Hey man. Uh, so we're going to have a sit down conversation. Um, but, um, Avi, uh, Avi with recent developments, like with what David Grush has come out and said, um, Avi's work is especially interesting because it is, it's, it's different. Um, it's not, it's not your, like what the UFO community would consider juicy. Um, but nonetheless, it's, it's pushing the pushing the 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 envelope forward. Um, and can you explain for people who don't know what Avi Loeb is doing with the Galileo project? Yeah, so he's kind of got a couple of things going on. He recently, uh, well, I say recently, I think the summer of 2023, he did this Pacific Ocean expedition to find traces of this meteorite, which you know they found they found these very small spherules and they've had them analysed and they believe them to be something from outside of our solar system. Uh, you know, that's really exciting stuff. But with the Galileo project itself, they have these uh, sensor systems that they, they did start off by placing them on the roof of the university at Harvard there. Um, but I think they've actually expanded to uh, some external locations as well, some hotspots. Uh, there's not been a lot of information put out yet. But And this is the thing with Avi. He's coming at this from a no-nonsense scientific perspective. Uh, point of view uh, it has the potential in the long term to really get some interesting results but uh, you know i think in the problem with that i see a lot is that people are always just want something every single day they want that new piece of juicy information i get that uh, but, but we can't always just expect it and i think what avi's doing you know he's looking far out into the the solar system he's looking at near earth objects as well and you know with this equipment that they're in, that they're investing in and, and putting up we could certainly get some very, very good data further down the road. Right. And and so what I always said was that disclosure, you know, what we've wanted in the UFO community for years is actual science, right? Rigorous science. Well, guess what, guys? Science is slow. It's very yeah. slow. Um, so we've been begging for it. And now that we have it, we're like, come on, come on, come on, come on. And it's like, guys, guys we can't rush these things. Cause when we rush, we get Peruvian mummies, chicken <laughs> bone mummies. Right. So like, yes, science is slow. Uh, but look at like, like things like the James Webb ta space telescope. Recently they, they had this, uh, I don't know if you saw it, but it was kind of like a, um, uh, a briefing that was sent out about whoever the first astronomer would be to find alien life, like a signature of alien life. Um, you know, how, how it would affect them and their family um, and like how they would become, you know, instantly, you know, famous and how, what it would do to their mental state, all this kind of weird stuff. And it's like, are they preparing us for something? Because I've said for a while that it seems like dominoes are being tipped over slowly, but it seems to be leading somewhere. And maybe you can give some insight. Do you think that they know that the other shoe is about to drop? 
I mean, that's kind of the million dollar question, isn't it? it, it there are so many things it that is. like point. It, there are things that kind of point in that direction that if if they were to kind of prepare us for something, this is how they would do it. Does that mean that is what's happening? Of course it doesn't. But, uh, you know, again, I, I, I have to take myself out of this and not just blindly believe things because I want them to be a certain way that it's happening. So, yeah, it could be. It could certainly be a pre preparation for something that is inevitable. I think disclosure eventually will be inevitable. Disclosure of what exactly is, again, something that we don't know because we don't know the origin of the phenomena, whatever it is. I think it could be something so far beyond our frame of reference or understanding, uh, but it could also be the opposite. It could all be a smokescreen psyop. I'm not going to pretend that I'm going to shut certain things off because I don't want them to be true. It's it's a, It's something, it's the way I've changed over the past few years about this subject is the more people I speak to, the more I have to be very open and keep everything on the table until it can be taken off, whether positive or negative. Um, so, I mean, I just continue to do what I do and have the conversation and we'll see what happens, you know. Maybe maybe these Peruvian mummies will eventually one day turn out to be something genuine. I mean, this is the thing. We just don't know where it's going to come from. Um, we all think always, uh, and I'm guilty of this as well. We keep so hyper focused on the government and Congress and everything, expecting that avenue to lead us to disclosure. Whereas, you know, there are so many other places it can come from. Yeah, you know, and we got to remember that if the phenomena genuinely is a non-human intelligence, they can give us disclosure any time they want. And, and I think I forget that sometimes. Absolutely. Um, and one of the one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about was because you mentioned that we don't even we don't even we can't even contemplate what the phenomena is. Um, and one of the one of the things that I really like the most is or one of the theories that I like the most is that um, I, I'm sure you're familiar with Dr. Michael Masters and his future yeah. human hypothesis. Um it's it's becoming not 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 to say the ET hypothesis is I think we're I'm going away from it, but I think we're going more towards something that's like interdimensional, um, and it's way, like you said, way beyond what we could even perceive. Um, what do you think about this future human hypothesis? And um, you know. Do you have any cases that come to mind uh, that could suggest this to be the case? Um, I mean, the, I, I think that when you speak to someone like Dr. Masters, you know, he lays forward some great points that make sense. And you think, well, that hypothesis or theory, certainly when you put it like that, makes sense. But then I find the same with the extraterrestrial hypothesis, somebody who, who studies that or, you know, has knowledge on that or can put some science behind it and say, well, this is why I think that makes sense. Same with the crypto terrestrial, same with ultra terrestrial, you know, so there are all these different theories and whoever you speak to can put forward a good case for each, which makes me then think one step further. And could we be seeing something that is maybe a combination of all of these things. And we're just trying to frame it in a reference that makes sense to us in, you know, now in 2024 with our current knowledge of science, physics and all of that. But what if it's something so much bigger, more complicated, like I said earlier, beyond our comprehension, because we're just not advanced enough to understand it fully yet. That right. I, I have to sort of think, even think that this, there is a theory out there that we haven't even considered yet because we can't that makes sense if these things happen to be hundreds of thousands if not millions of years more advanced then i have to take into consideration that that it could be something so much more than just this theory or that theory and so i right again it's 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 it, it messes with my brain so much sometimes right because you have that and then you have people like chris bledsoe right um who seem to be able like 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 there's something going on where he's able to summon these balls of light and you know there are other people who have talked about um you know being abducted and uh seeing the true form of the being was just a ball of light like this a pure energy and could that be 
where our religions come from, right? Like, 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 um, angels being, you know, these beings of light and, um, you know, it's, it's, it just, it has, it always has me wondering. And with the blood cell story in particular, what do you take of, of the, this whole lady in white? Cause it seems the government has taken it really seriously. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, I and find it extremely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Bledsoe story is fascinating. Some of those incidents, the lady, you know, it's been seen before. We've heard about these kind of instances before. Uh, and then, like you said, the government interest in it, like what do they know or why are they looking into it? Again, it, it adds something to the story for me. It's not just a random individual talking about something they saw. And not to take anything away from it if it was, the same with the abductees, you know, um, the last few years, I think the abdu abduction part of the subject and abductees themselves have taken a bit of a back seat to all the focus on the government military aspect of the phenomena. And I think, you know, in the last six months, I've started talking to a lot more abductees and it's a very sensitive subject. You know, these people have dealt with something that has affected them you know, affected them deeply. And, and I have to remain respectful of that. And I always say to myself, it's not my place to necessarily believe these people, but I, I believe that they believe, you know, and I, I, I'm highly respectful of that. And I, I think it warrants hearing their voice and, and platforming them as well to let them tell their story, because the more that we do that, the more corroboration we're going to get. Now, as well, you know, these people say they're seeing, or some people say they're seeing gray aliens or biologics. Yet, you know, it always begs the question to me, are they being shown something that has something behind it? Like, you know, if you look beyond the veil that we would see something like a, a ball of light, but it manifests itself in a physical form as something that looks biological. This is where, again, my brain goes off to other things is that we may be, not seeing its true form or, or the true the whole picture uh, exactly yeah because there's so many different things that has been seen Do, does it all fit under this one umbrella of a non-human intelligence are we seeing multiple species or multiple origins of, of where these things are from you know begs so many questions that it really, it, I, I, i've got to stay open to it all yeah, I think, and I think we all have to. And I really, what do you think um, when it comes to like some of the conversations that you've had? Um, what are some of the like with with abductees? What are some of the themes? Um, because in, in at least in my eyes, it seems like the abduction phenomena, like. Uh, are there any recent abductions that we can, because it seems like it dropped off at least reporting wise. I, 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 you know, there's no more high profile abductions um, in the news. It's, it's more or less all the nuts and bolts stuff. Um, but I mean, are our abductions still happening? That's a great question. And I've not seen or heard of any cases in recent times, which, you know, begs the question, are they still happening? But, you know, there are some great researchers out there uh, who look into the abduction phenomena who, you know, I know that they say that these things are still happening. You look at the Experiencer group run by J. Christopher King. Now, I, yeah. I'm not a part of that. I've not been involved in any of their private conversations. But if these people are still talking about things happening to them, then, you know, you have to take it seriously that these people are still experiencing these kind of things. Melinda Leslie as well talks about, she speaks to abductees who are still having things happen, you know, so yeah, just because we uh, don't necessarily I've... see it reported like it maybe was 20, 30 years ago, doesn't necessarily mean it's not still happening. So again, I'm, I'm very open to it. Right. And when, it, you know, I, um, I think the world is fully, uh, at least the UFO community for now um, is fully, you know, on edge um, with David Grush, right? Not on edge, like on edge, like we don't like him. It's on edge uh, waiting for the next thing to drop. Um, and there's this rumored op-ed that's coming. Um, David Grush as a, as a whole, um, when he came forward in the interview with Ross Coltart and then the subsequent hearings and, um, you know, everything that's taken place since, uh, 
how how do you see David Grush and other UFO whistleblowers um, and their part in this whole disclosure process? I think, again, it's another case of these things have to play out in the correct manner. They can't be rushed. Uh, and that's, you know, people will say, well, that's just an excuse because nothing's happening. Well, no, you know, these things do have to play out correctly. David Grush is, uh, he's treading a fine line and has been since the day he came out. Um, and and there have got to be, like, if we're to believe 40 plus other whistleblowers who have talked to Congress and, and, and that, then we've got to make sure that Grush is treated correctly as well, because if he's not, then other whistleblowers aren't certainly going to be lining up to come forward if if we're seeing people like David Grush being, you know, mistreated. Uh, and so I think hopefully 2024 will be that crossover year where, you know, people have seen, you know, look, it's been a year since Grush came out and now I'm ready to step forward because I, I like what I'm seeing. These are, you know, right. hopefully that's what's happening. I, I don't know. I'm I'm just kind of trying to put myself in that in that position. I mean, it's 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 a struggle because I just I don't know what it would feel like to have that amount of pressure on you. I can only begin to imagine. So, I think as well, you know, people put so much on Grush and this story that if it turns out that it doesn't go anywhere, it's going to be a massive step back for the subject as a whole. Which it may be to a degree, but I, I don't think it's the be all and end all of disclosure. Let's say. Right. But, you know, what worries me is recent things that have happened. Um, for instance, um, the era report, um, the historical report, and then not even just the report, but the way that they limited media and basically controlled who could be in the room. Um, when that went down, what did you think about it? Because, I mean, you are friends with guys like Chris Sharp, who you know, if they could have been in the room, would have asked the hard questions, but weren't allowed to. Um, and that's a very dangerous, dangerous thing. Yeah, it's it's uh, embarrassing for the Pentagon, the way it's been handled, I think, in the last few weeks. I'm all, uh, if, if the report is what it is, we kind of expected it to be that way, but to, Agreed. to stop mainstream journalists like Ross Coulthard, you know, on News Nation from being right. there. I, 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 it, why not? What have they got to hide? Why are they afraid of the hard questions? If if it's like simply, if it's there is if no it's evidence, simply, it, yeah, if if it's just birds in the sky, why not take why not take the hard questions? Yeah, exactly. You know, and there are people talking who have presented information to Arrow does show there is something happening that is not straightforward and so it, to have it dismissed so it was just a mess that report flagrantly it, you know, it, yeah like it, there are things just doesn't add up there are puzzle pieces missing from this story and it'll be interesting to see what part two of this report comes out i think we're, we're going to see a few months of questions being asked of of, of why this report that was the way it was and it was handled the way it was do you think that this was a modern day project blue book attempt to squash i mean yeah i can see similarities i wouldn't put it all exactly but, the same you know what's, well you know it's honestly i give project blue book much more credit <laughs> i i hate to even because at least they went out and they boots on the ground and yada, yada, yada. Like, you know, they, they went, they held press conferences, um, at, you know, uh, uh, places where, where events happened. They did investigations. Yes. The air force at the end of the day had a preconceived, uh, outcome that, that Heineck had the, you know, you know, the swamp gas scenario. Um, sure. When he knew, he knew damn well it was not. Um, Arrow didn't even do that. They collected hours, hours of testimony from people like my friend Mario Woods. Four hours of testimony. He was on a nuclear missile base. He responded to a high, the highest category breach there is on Ellsworth Air Force Base. He was dispatched to November 5, which is one of the missile silos. He arrived to see a gaseous ball of light. The atmosphere in the car got thick. 
He passed out. His partner passed out. They woke up a mile from the missile silo. All documented. Richard Doty was there the next day. I mean, we know this event happened. That's how is that not at least yeah. something you go further and say, I can't explain this. Yeah, it I mean, I think I think we have to remember that in the early days of Arrow, when they were getting testimony from people like Mario Woods, a lot of the testimony was taken over the phone, not even on a secure phone line. They weren't recording it. They were taking just handwritten notes. So it was almost, it was like, it was just, uh, we'll just, we'll play ball. We'll, we'll listen. We'll take some notes. But it doesn't seem like they were interested in following up on it or taking it seriously. Uh, you know, the, the early days of Arrow were, we know were, were a joke almost. There was no funding. It was just a mishmash was, of, of something or other, but. Yeah. yeah. And, and honestly, you know, but, but my one last thing about Arrow, do you, do you think Phillips could, could write this course? Uh, or, or not write. The, could he write the ship's course and make Arrow something that is there any redemption for it? Not under Phillips. I think he's just this interim figure who's just been put in until they find someone new. Oh, okay. I, is that the case? I'd like. To, I think that's the case at the moment. I think he's interim. I think they they are looking to actively recruit a new head uh, of the of the group. Um, we, again, we'll see. But. Uh, yeah. I mean, I try and remain positive on these things, but it's very difficult it's for me to, to think that there's any turnaround with Arrow. Uh, I think there's a reason why so many people are skipping Arrow and going direct to Congress because the trust just isn't there and maybe it can't be re rebuilt. You know, In an ideal world, I'd like to say it could, but it's not looking good. Yeah, and then whatever happened to that presidential, um, you know, when the shootdowns happened, the president spoke about forming his own group. I wonder whatever happened to that, but um, it, I mean, it is it is what it is at this point. Um, I think Congress, um, the only thing I'm worried about with Congress is that, do you think uh, it, there there's a possibility that with David Grush coming forward, you have, and, and it's not like it's any secret right so lockheed any of these people who have this technology um hidden away or you know in some bunker you know is it by david grush coming forward kind of raising the flag do you think they started moving these things and you know uh, inevitably we're just going to be playing a shell game i mean if I was one of those individuals sitting on that technology and, you know, we were, had language coming out at the end of 2023 about potential eminent domain being written into law, I would certainly move that and bury it <laughs> even deeper, you know. It's almost like right. we gave them the opportunity to, to really hide it further. So, yeah, I mean... It's, that's my worry. It's, it, it, yeah, that's the thing as well, isn't it? You know, I think it was Ross Coulthard mentioned it on, on uh, a show the other day that... You know, Arrow, I think, went to some of these uh, aerospace uh, corporations and sort of said, oh, you know, have you got this technology? Like, what? they're not going to tell you yes. I mean, this is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, I got you know? it in the blue room. Uh, right. Why don't you take a walk <laughs> with me? Just so, idiots. Oh, man, it's, it's, it's a joke. So, yeah. What, who, who knows what, what happened? I, I, I don't know what's going to happen you know as we go through this year with the intelligence authorization act for the next year and the ndaa as well who knows whether that's going to have some robust language in it or not we don't hear a lot right now from many of the congress people I, I i'm told there are things happening behind the scenes that we're not seeing in play out on on twitter and stuff but will we ever get any kind of results from that will we see this ramping up or getting into fifth gear again with new hearings and stuff i i hope so and overclassification on these kind of the you know I, I can't it's countless it's count it's countless there have been countless people who have said that there are videos that exist that would prove this beyond a shadow of a doubt if they were released by the government. Why do you think, or how do you think one of these has not been leaked other than 
the you know the New York Times or anything that Corbell's put out or like because there are clearly like uh, we we hear about it in so many cases where there was clearly recording capabilities by the military of something um, extraordinary um, and you know like I said, there's an overclassification. Um, do you think that a lot of what we're seeing these days is man-made? Um, uh, what, what, I mean, what's your take? I mean, it's hard to say why things haven't leaked. Uh, I, I don't know who has access to where some of these smoking gun videos are. Do they sit on a JWIC server that thousands of people have access to, or are they really compartmentalized? I, I honestly wouldn't know. I wouldn't like to hazard a guess at, at that. Uh, who's to say that we haven't had videos leaked that we don't know are real that they may be hoaxes this is the game as well isn't it that there could be s some genuine information out there that it's so mixed in with the disinformation and misinformation that that we we simply can't confirm its legitimacy even though it's right there in in front of our faces it's it's this is the game that they've played for years in the intelligence community not just with the ufo subject it's just smearing good information with bad to make it you know hard to to confirm uh you know i look we've been told that there are a few videos that show certain things you know i believe they exist but will we ever see them because of the overclassification at this point it doesn't look likely but right Who's to say further down the line that the overclassification and the systems that that is all around changes at some point? If Congress managed to do something and get that to change, it could happen. But right. again, we don't know. And and the reason I bring up videos is because AI, artificial intelligence, is about to render any picture, video of a UFO, civilian produced just untrustworthy like it's yeah. going to be so hard to differentiate what is real and what is fake and do you foresee a a, a problem and going faster than coming faster than than we think i, I mean think what chat will... gpt has what soma that's coming out soon yeah 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 that that's the thing i think it's gonna muddy the water a lot more we're gonna see a lot more fake or ai created videos flying around you know online on social media where people will be arguing about them for weeks whether they're real or not i think the only way that we will have any kind of positivity from any videos coming out is if they're heavily backed with metadata and chain of custody as, you know, especially if they're leaked, let's say leaked military videos, then we can prove that they were taken at a certain time in a certain year, a certain location with all of that metadata intact and a full chain of custody. Because right. without that, there's no point. You could be arguing about it for years and years. And if you just simply cannot prove it 100%, it's a waste of time now because of the AI. Yeah. You know, you know. Yeah. And, it, and it, 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 it's, I mean, some of the videos that I've seen already, are just like, oh my god, I, like it's almost indistinguishable, and sure. it's it's. I mean, you know, it'll make content creation a, a, a little bit more fun and and um, easy. But as far as uh, what, what, like, what will f going forward, what will constitute as evidence? Right, it's going to have to be multiple sensor systems picking yeah. something up metadata like you said um you know uh cross-referenced with uh um documentation and hopefully multiple uh, uh uh multiple videos so um you know it 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 it's it's frustrating but with the rise of technology comes the rise of of you know, potential, potential hoaxes. So, um, it's, it's yeah. something that the UFO community is going to be ready to face, honestly. Um, Vinny, you yourself, how, how did you become interested in this topic specifically, um, in, in, in starting all this? Because, uh, you've been doing a lot of work to try to, again, move the ball forward um what, what you know what got you into ufos and in this crazy world 
I mean, I grew up in the, I'm a child of the late seventies. I grew up with the eighties with an abundance of really good quality, high end science fiction movies. And that really like set my brain off on the, the, the questions of, you know, the life out there and stuff. And, you know, going further on in life into my twenties and thirties, watching a lot of documentaries on fringe subjects, I suppose you could say uh, of all sorts, um, eventually right. landing on the UFO subject probably 20 years ago. And then about 15 years ago, I found myself just, I need more. I, I need more. I answers. need it. So, yeah. <laughs> so I would, you know, I, that's when I just would sit late at night for many nights, just browsing through declassified archives, FBI, CIA, you name it. I spent many of hours delving through them, thinking that I may find something that no one else has found, you know, naively thinking. And that just sort of set me off. You know, I was just addicted to research, um, looking at old cases and stuff. And it just kind of, it just grew from there. And I guess like a lot of people, when the pandemic hit, that kind of gave me the opportunity to, to start doing more, putting myself out there. And, you know, here we are, I haven't, had a minute's break to, to really stop I'm I live and breathe this subject and uh, I definitely have a right. lot more questions than I started with well you did uh you worked on uh, a series phenomenology um and what was your what you know uh if you could could you explain what you guys were doing and what the two seasons uh kind of uh what what did you come away from it with yeah, sure. So if you um, can try to summarize it, I know it's a so lot, for, for, but... for hundred, hundreds of years on these two peaks on the edge of the Andean plateau <laughs> uh, in Colombia, these strange, mysterious lights had been witnessed and recorded uh, for hundreds of years. Um, and so we wanted to go out there. Uh, my friend Ashley Cowie, who, who led the team, he lives out there. He had captured some photographs of these strange lights on a couple of occasions over the past few years. And so he wanted to bring a team out to investigate it, uh, speak to a lot of the indigenous locals as well. You know, they live and breathe spirituality and, and, and high strangeness. So we went out there, we did all that. We explored the area and spoke to the, the, a lot of witnesses. And luckily enough, at the end of the first trip, we managed to film these strange lights on the mountain. Um, and so that was great. Uh, it was an eye opener for me, an incredible experience. Uh, season two, we went back out. We tried to take a bit more equipment with us. I took, I have a, a thermal drone, which would have been interesting to pick up these lights with. Unfortunately, we didn't see them again. But part of this documentary was also to document our journey as people. You know, I'm just a guy from the UK who doesn't really have much business being in rural Colombia speaking with indigenous people about UFOs and strange lights. So it was about how we grew as individuals as well to being in such a, a strange place and experiencing this type of thing. So it was a great experience and I hope actually to continue it in the next couple of years. That'd be fantastic. Uh, I really, I mean, I, like I said, I enjoyed it and I love this. I love the boots on the ground and like the, yeah. the raw approach that you guys took. Um, and it's something that Dan and I have been talking about, um, because, you know, he's going to be moving to, to my side of the, my side of the world. Um, so, uh, doing more stuff like that. Um, and I, I just, like I said, I really, I really liked it. I wish, uh, I wish he, I wish you guys shopped it to like, uh, a bigger, um, is there any talks about that? Like getting it from Vimeo to, like Amazon or, or Tubi too. I mean that, that three part series Tubi did with uh TMZ was actually really good. Yeah. I enjoyed that. I, I mean, yeah, there have been conversations had about putting it on a, a more uh, accessible platform. The, I think the thing is, is that all of us involved in it, we're all so busy with so many other things in our lives that sometimes these things either take time or they get put to the kind of the wayside every now and again. So who knows further down the line? Yeah. It, 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 we could start seeing it on bigger platforms. I, I hope that's the case, but at the end of the day, 
all I'm all I'm really care about is actually doing the work, get, getting out there, getting those boots on the ground. Because the feeling you get when you're doing it is, yeah, it's a you know, it's a pinch yourself moment. You can't believe that this subject has taken you so far around the world to do these kind of investigations. You know, and there's certainly, uh, I'll have to reiterate this: there is no monetary incentive, you know, for for, for doing these True. projects. You know, yeah. This, that's if not anything, what it's you, about. yeah. If anything, you lose money doing it. Oh God, um, absolutely. I mean, I could be working in corporate still earning, you know, six figures, but I choose to do this and earn, you know, bare bones enough to pay my bills. And, and that's about it, you know, so. Right, uh, right. You know, to be, just wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, people, well, people think that, you know, everyone's a grifter. You know, if you, if you make money off the subject, you're a grifter. It's like, no, no, that's no. Uh, <laughs> most of us are 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 funding it by ourselves and yep. losing money i mean look at even james fox i hate to say it like his whole situation with discovery and everything like you know uh, he basically got, got no money for moment of contact yeah. like imagine yeah, that imagine so that it's yeah. and he's what you know as far as i'm concerned he's one of if not the best UFO documentary investigative documentarian um, that that there is, um, I think he I he's up you know up there. Like I said, I think he's the goat, um, and uh, I really enjoy his style. Um, but yeah. you know, it is it, it, it it's a sad reality, is what it is. Because then you got guys like you know Dr. Greer and and who are you know, very well off. Not to say exactly. one or the other is, you know, better or worse. Um, it's just, it, it's, that's the, that's the, the reality of this world is it's, it's, you gotta be, if you're in it for the right reasons, um, the money is the last thing that, that you care about. Um, but yeah, and that's I, what I, I really like about you. I appreciate that. And I think one thing that people need to remember as well is like, and I, I'll, I'm in this for the passion because I love the subject. I don't expect anyone to just believe that blindly. But if I wanted to make money, why would I be in the UFO subject when there are so many other things to do in this world to make money? You know, so many more easier things to do. Trying to make money in the UFO subject, if that was a thing, would be like trying to get blood out of a stone. It's impossible. Yeah. So why would I be, you know, as, and it's not just right. me or a lot of, a lot of good friends of mine who have that grift attack thrown at them all the time. It's, it's just become a buzzword where people throw it around to try and cause offense. And it, it's, it's fallen flat on its face because no one really cares anymore. We're just the people that are doing the work for the right reasons are doing it the work. It just rolls for the right off. Reasons. Yeah, yeah. It just, yeah. honestly, it just rolls off. And I've said it countless times um, that, you know, dude, People need to eat, like you know, they need to pay their rent. And if they're if they're like if they're putting their time and effort, like we're I, right now, I'm I'm filming my first documentary, and it's a slow mm. process, and I'm funding it, yeah. you know, myself, and you know, it it's it's been amazing, but it's also been very stressful <laughs> in in its own right. So, uh, like coordination wise, and uh, there's a it's a it's. I, that's a talk for another time, but yeah. you said you got into this because of the mysteries of the universe, right? Yeah. Um, I was always that guy, like at the party, um, who would be smoking a joint, you know, and, and huddled in the corner, uh, talking with the friends, like about existential uh, stuff, you know, um, like what, what happens after we die? What ha you know? That are we alone in the universe? Um, what do, what are your thoughts on uh, uh, in the in the testimony you've been exposed to in your educated opinion what's your best guess at some of these questions what does do you think consciousness survives death i know uh, yeah. i know <laughs> i mean there's been some great work great research done in recent years that that point to there being something there 
you know, post death, you know, the work of Nick Cook, you know, Nick Cook coming from his sort of Amazing. aviation and defense background, now switching completely over to the consciousness side of things, um, being involved with the Bigelow Institute for Consciousness Studies as well. I, I, I think it's very early, early days when it comes to the, that's the science to support this kind of theory. But I, I believe that, you know, it, it could potentially lead to there being some really big answers. You know, I, I want to believe that there is absolutely. But yeah, I keep my eye on that, si that well, side of the subject as well. Imagine. I mean, because I've always thought that there was, I mean, for me, one of the moments that set me on the course of doing the show was I was in the room with my mother as, as she passed away. And right. I, I remember it so, and my audience is going to be like, dude, we've heard this story like 900 times. I come on. But I kid you not. Like it, it's what I, it's, it's what I call a moment of conversion. I already had one when I was a kid, but you know, it's like you question those kind of memories, but I had a UFO come literally right over my head, classic disc. And that's when I started like, you know, I was like the closeted UFO guy, but always talking about it at parties. And you know, that I was always that guy. Um, but it was really when I was in the room with my mother, I looked at her. She was there. I looked down. I remember looking at my pants and I think I was reaching for my phone, but I can't remember exactly what I was doing, but something told me to look up and I looked up. And as I looked up this, like, you know, when you look down a long highway and you see like the, the heat wave, yeah, it's a uh, dispersion like blur. Yeah. It, something crossed my field of vision of like some sort of dispersion blur and it went out the window pretty. And then I look back at my mother and she was gone. Wow. I'm almost certain I watched her leave her body. Mm. Um, and I don't know what to do with that. Right. So that's what led me to doing the show. It's like, I, UFOs, I've seen one, and now I'm pretty sure, you know, what I just witnessed, I was supposed to witness, and I'm supposed to go down this road. Um, so, I mean, there's got. That's why I asked the question. I I ask it to everybody. Um, like, do you think? Because consciousness, I think, is a big part of this. Uh, we talk, you know, Bob Bazaar, right? His story, no buttons in the craft. This thing was clearly, you know, operated, if you believe Lazar, uh, it was operated by some other means. And could consciousness be the key to, um, you know, travel throughout uh, dimension, space? How to, you know, could that be the key? Um, I don't know. It could well be absolutely yeah i mean uh, that's the thing as well you, you obviously had your experiences and a lot of people i speak to have had experiences and that that's why they're like look i know it's real because i've seen this and i've seen that and i you know i i don't i don't have the luxury of that unfortunately but you know this is why it's so important as well because people you know, i don't need disclosure because i've seen things and you know that's there's a lot of power behind that kind of thing you know when you speak to people you can see the, the they, they genuinely you know, don't they've seen things, and and you know that I find that fascinating. I, I, I and it's, you know, it's some of the people that have had these sightings, or let's say encounters. Let's go a step further: abductions. Mm. What we, right? What you and I strive for. What we, what we, like you said, live and breathe for. They would, some of them, give it all away. Yeah. They have confirmation. They have the confirmation we want, and they would give it all away and and erase it from their brains if they could. And that's yeah. it. Blows my mind because it's like, um, I I do you think that the, there it like. Three. The terrible's bio mine.
Introducing the ultimate cognitive enhancement solution, Biomind. Today's video is exclusively brought to you by our sponsor, Dentia Herbals. Unlock your brain's full potential with a powerful blend of nine meticulously selected plants and mushrooms, each backed by peer-reviewed research for their cognitive boosting benefits and safety. Adentia Herbal's formula combines organic full-spectrum powders and potent standardized extracts, ensuring that you receive the optimal concentration of each ingredient's cognitive enhancing compound, carefully selecting the most desirable parts of each plant and mushroom to create a harmonious blend that supports your mental clarity and focus. But that's not all. They infuse each bottle with personal intention of improving the lives, the minds, and overall greatness of each of their customers. Because of their commitment to your well-being every step of the way, you're gonna get an exclusive 25% off your order via www.dentiaherbals.com using our code total disclosure at checkout. All the links will be in the description or on the screen. Richard Dolan said about some people in this community, it would be naive to say that it's all dandelions and roses, like that they're all like super advanced, they've advanced past cruelty or indifference. Um, it, would you, what, what side of that are you on? Yeah, I mean, look, it's the same with, again, I, I mentioned doc, Dr. Greer, who says that look, they're all friendly, they're here to help us. Well, you know, you can't say that to the people that have had life-changing negative experiences with, what you know, abductions and things that have happened to them. It doesn't certainly point to love and light, does it? <laughs> I mean, look, I think about it like this, with anything in this world, in this universe, you've got light and dark, positive and negative, yin and yang. Mm. You can't, you're good and bad. You can't have one like without you, the other. Exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that makes, that makes the most sense. So good and bad, negative, positive, surely that's the same with, with everything, you know, why again, and that's why I think listened... that that's why I think that it's like almost a natural state of human beings to factionalize, right? It's a, it's, it's, I don't know. Cause it, 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 it makes me wonder, like it was the story of the uh, tower of Babylon, right? Where, you know, it was struck down because they got too close. Then they divided or, or, you know, God divided us or whoever divided us, um, by separating our languages so we couldn't communicate. It's like factionalism at its core is what's keeping us from advancing. And we see it in the UFO community. Like, it's it's so present. Like, you got the Lou faction, you got the Greer faction. Like, it, if we could just step away and all step back, I think there's a piece of the puzzle in everybody's hand. Yeah. I agree. I, it's that same old thing, isn't it? Like people say, if we all just work together, that, you know, all these kind of positive things. And it may be true, but unfortunately, we are only human and you will get that sort of part of society who online are happy to just sit behind their keyboard and argue for the sake of arguing, to throw insults out for the sake of trying to get under someone's skin. It's it's just the way it is in any any subject you'd find it. So... I just do you know how many, as best I can. You know how many comments I'm going to get on this video about how um, stop interrupting, stop interrupting, <laughs> stop interrupting, stop interrupting. It's dude, it's one part. I, it, uh, it's a troll that like for some reason hates me and they create different profiles. And like that's they just there was a video literally I did where the guest didn't show up and it was just me. I was like, I, I was like, let's go live anyway. And I talked by myself, but I didn't change the title. Right. And they commented, stop interrupting the guest. Stop interrupting the multiple times. And I was like, dude, it was just me. 
<laughs> who are you? And that's the day I figured out it was a troll. And I'm like, you bastard. Wow. Like this whole time, this whole time. Um, like I, 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 listen, I'm the first one to, to take constructive criticism. I really right. am. It's but hard though. It, it, it is. And like people like Rogan, you know, th they say, don't read the comments, don't read the comments. But like as a smaller creator, like you read yeah. the fucking comments, dude, you read them. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but this is you the know? thing. And this is what I've, I've noticed on my show is that I'll, I'll put out an interview, um, and I'll have someone in the comments saying, really great interview. I love how you let your guests speak. And then you'll have someone below that comment saying, you need to chime in and interrupt more and do the, exactly the opposite. So you will always get both sides of the art. You cannot win with, you know, you, you please someone, someone else hates it. And it's always yep. that back and forth. And I've just I learned to live with that. You know, it's just the way it is. And I, 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 people, people say, you know, you need to do this. You need to do that. Look, I'm just a dude who put himself on YouTube to interview some people. I'm not a professional. I don't claim to be. I'm just putting my conversations out there. Uh, you know, I'm not professional. But you know I what? Try and make it look good, but you know, I'm just a dude. <laughs> but you know what? We so. put ourselves out there to be judged, yeah, right? And that's and we, understandable. We, we we have the gall to go out there and put ourselves out there to be judged. So, you know, to any keyboard warrior out there, I hate to like say this, but put yourself out there and then let's have a conversation, right? Yeah. Because it's, I... <laughs> you know, it's much, much easier said than done. Like the, the microphone that, that, that Vinny's using, by the way, you know how much money that microphone costs? It's, it's a lot of money. <laughs> uh, put it that way. Um, I have a sure, it's a sure, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm using the Rodea uh, Ro Road mic because they sent me the Streamer X box and the microphone okay. and the holder together as like a yeah. as like a try it out. But my Shure is my baby uh, because it's just the greatest microphone. I I think it's the best microphone out there. But um, Ro this one puts up a fight and the, the they get a they get a great setup so um i highly recommend anyone who's a content creator uh look into to road because they got some great stuff especially for like if you're making documentaries wireless microphones they have a great great setup for all that stuff um but uh i want to finish uh off our conversation with ufos because that's kind of what we're here for um you've you've interviewed like the creme de la creme in 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 my eyes of of ufo researchers um which which few interviews have stuck out the most to you oh that's a good question you know what i should be better at answering this question because i get asked it all the time but i always seem to forget to, to really think deep about it look i started off in 2021 a, a very fresh just threw myself out there i was lucky enough to uh, become friends with Lou Elizondo early on uh, and interview Lou. Uh, and I look back at those interviews with fond memories. Um, so they stand out and they always will. But I think some of the better interviews have been with uh, Diana Pasolka. I've had, I've interviewed Diana twice and they're always, I always come away with a new train of thought, the way that she does this whole religion technology and combines it all into the UFO subject. I find fascinating and they, I always come away feeling good from those kind of interviews as well but one thing i'll always say as well is I'll, I'll prepare for an interview and do an interview that i expected to not get much from and they'll be the ones that i sometimes get the most from it's that's it's, it's a strange thing it actually really is and you know what i've 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 had that same exact feeling and mm. you know the two people you mentioned diana and lou i mean they're they're on the top 10 list for me um you know i've had a lot of my you know uh bucket list people but you know there are people that that i really want to have on uh like danny sheehan like lou elizondo like yeah. diana pasoka um and you know eventually um i know the show will get to that point um uh and and i, I really look forward to it but like you said um those three people 
what they're doing for the topic, the credibility that they lend to it, especially, you know, uh, especially, especially people like Elizondo and, um, uh, Diana, um, and I, actually all three, um, because of just their, their credibility as people bringing to the table what they are. Um, it's, it's just amazing. And we are in the, the golden age of ufology as, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, absolutely, man. And I, I, I enjoy it. That's the thing as well. I enjoy speaking to these people and I, you know, I have the interviews that like, are like an hour long interview on my channel, but the conversations that I form with these people outside of that are amazing as well. You know, I think this is right. the thing, you know, I get, I get, I, lucky enough to be friends with quite a few people I've interviewed now. And, you know, there's always to say that there are individuals who I've, I've had on my show, military witnesses who have come forward, pilots who have come forward. They're some of the most important conversations I've had as well to be able to platform these people who have seen things who want to get their voice heard. And, you know, I love that. I love being able to do that. It's, it's really, it's really good. What do you think the chances are that, civilian research beats the government to the punch on disclosure. I know it sounds weird, but do you think there's a possibility that civilian research and that this whole side of it could actually beat the government to some sort of disclosure, like proving it beyond a shadow of a doubt? Yeah, I think there is every chance that that could happen. Like we said right at the start of the show, when you know we're always expecting the disclosure to come from the government, the Congress, and everything, because that's where the focus has been. That it could actually come from left field. It could come from another country. It could come from the phenomena itself. But it could come from a really good UFO researcher who just so happens to find that you know, that breaking story, that smoking gun bit of evidence and bring it forward in the correct way. Because if done right, it can completely give us what we're all craving so much and that's disclosure. So yeah, I have faith in the community. That's amazing. It, it, I really, and, and like I said, I, I really um, am starting to believe that, um, I mean, I, it, it's still, it could go one way or the other for me. Um, I, but I, I, I think, uh, I still think the more likely scenario is some sort of government, um, you know, start small, uh, you know, just dis discover, uh, life yeah. on another planet super far away, right? Super far. And then slowly it'll get closer, right? It'll go from microbial life to, oh, we might have found signs of, a like an advanced civilization and next thing you know you know all of a sudden we're you know disclosure uh is a little bit more closer to home right because then yeah. uh they they start revealing uh well yeah they're actually you know they've been here longer than us and um the, i guess one the, i think i said this three times but the one last thing um something came across in my interview with Richard Doty. Could all the secrecy be that they had a hand, we talk about this missing link, right? Um, in the cosmic scale, the human, the current human brain, like basically doubled uh, overnight on the cosmic scale. Um, do you think there could be secrecy involved? Because they, the phenomenon, whoever they are, had a hand to play in our creation, and they are our god, if you will. Yeah, absolutely, it, absolutely, that could be the case. kind of a haunting yeah. thing to think about. It is, right? but you know, it, like you said, we we've been searching for this missing link in our evolutionary chain for so long. That could just be the answer, plain and simple. It, I mean, it doesn't affect me. I'll be like, okay, cool. You know, I'm glad. I'm, I'm here makes sense some, right you know you know other people might find it a lot more worrisome or scary that that's what happened but yeah i mean it does it makes sense to me it's a potential and that but you know because like we you know we talk about the anunnaki and you know uh 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 this 
advanced race that, you know, basically created us to be slaves in, in a, in a uh, you know, to, to mine gold to help fit, you know, fix their atmosphere. And, sure. um, you know, it kind of makes sense in a way because, like, it's human beings can't stop. Um, it's like we can't, we're never satisfied. We just want to keep creating more and more and more and more. It's like we can't stop. Even though if we did stop at like the iPhone 15 and the camera I'm using, we'd be fine. We, yeah. I mean, we'd be fine. Right. That's true. But we just want to create and create and create and create. And it like kind of makes sense that, and we have this fascination with returning to the stars. Um, and it just like, it, it just makes me wonder like if, if, Diana is on to something that there is this connection between um, our religions and the phenomena that were as the name just changed. You know, Jacques Vallée has talked about this as well. Sure. Well, this is it. Yeah, I think we're seeing a resurgence of a lot of work that's probably been looked into in the past and we're seeing it in a new lens because of the current climate of uh, how advanced we are te technologically in the in 2024 compared to 30 years ago you know i think these things the research will change as as the world around us changes and the 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 technology that, that we have in our hands these days that you know this the power in this 50 years ago would have been the size of a, a warehouse you know and things like that literally so, <laughs> yeah and that's the thing so the way that things change based on the the current climate of technology and that i find it all fascinating and how it links uh, and so yeah that's why i'll always just keep having these kind of conversations just to just to have them you know if, whether i understand right. a lot of what i'm told is is a different story it's just fun have you <laughs> have you had uh jacques jacques on? i've not had him on the show no there have no? been a couple of occasions where we were kind of back and forth trying to line it up but then i was in colombia and, and he was out of the country and you know uh it never happened but I was lucky enough, obviously, to meet with Jacques in Paris at the end of last year when I was uh, introducing him at a conference. And uh, so, yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, it seems like that guy's going to be around forever. So uh, yeah. I always find it fascinating that he has um, a connection to the creation of the internet. And the second most popular thing that was searched, aside from porn, was UFOs. And it's like, like these weird synchronicities, right? So, um, <laughs> talk to us about your conference, when it is, how people can get tickets. Um, again, maybe go through the guest lineup without, you know, just who's going to be there, um, and how it's going to be laid out, um, and give us all the details. Cause, uh, I know I'll be there and, um, I know my buddy Dan will be there and obviously you'll be there. And uh, there'll yes. be a lot of a lot of a lot of great great stuff going on. Yeah, so it's the Anomalous Research and Exploration Forum, or RF for short. It is on April 27 and 28. Uh, we have uh, presentations throughout the day with uh, like open sessions where everyone can just sort of mingle, ask questions, and have conversations. So we're going to have Avi Lowe, Beatrice Villarreal, Danny Sheehan, Carl the Crusher, Chris Sharp. Graham Rendell's going to be doing a fantastic uh, presentation on, on his uh, sort of historical research as well. Um, there's going to be a big 90 minute closeout open session at the end of the weekend where myself and a few other podcasters are going to kind of be there as guests to to kind of mingle and, and just have a really good time. Uh, if you follow me on any social medias, you can find the link. There is an early bird $5 off code available at the moment uh, as well. Um, it's just a, a I've been involved with these events before as a, as an attendee. They are so much fun. They really allow people to just kind of come together. Uh, and it's always a positive experience as well. So I'm just trying to bring that to the community. And I hope to see people there. And this is kind of like a a test run with this new um, this this new uh, platform, right? Um, because well, it's it... it's through it's it's not new. I mean, Richard Dolan's upgrade the debate series. They've done quite a few events before. They did one last year with Richard Dolan, Steve Bassett, and Chris Leto, and you know I was involved with that one, and it was such a, a wonderful event that 
I, you know, I was like, I really want to do something similar to that on a similar platform. And you know, here we are doing it under Richard's platform. Uh, they're just really well run. The team behind it are such professionals. They they really know what they're doing. And I'm I'm really honored that they've agreed well, to that's work awesome. with me on, on this. Yeah. So that that's 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 really awesome, man. And uh I'm so happy. I can't wait to I can't wait to see um um I well, I can't wait to see the whole thing. And um like Thank I you. said, send me all send me all the links and let me create a marker. One fifteen thirty six. Send me all the links so I can include them in the description. Um of the podcast and the um the video. Yeah, will do, man. All right. But Vinny, uh it was so great for you to be here. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. Um and I I, I look forward to our next conversation. Um and we can uh we could definitely, you know, dive into some cool stuff because it seems like the ufo world is just on fire lately um with with stuff to talk about. So um uh, we'll see you next time, buddy. Thanks, Ty. I appreciate it. All right. Guys, that was Vinny from Disclosure Team. All of the links will be in the description below. We want to thank him uh, for taking time out of his day to be here with us. Uh, and I want to thank you, the listener or viewer and or viewer, uh, for taking time out of your day to spend it with Total Disclosure. Uh, make sure to like, share, subscribe. And if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, Leave a five-star rating uh, and a written review. It helps us so much uh, with the algorithm, getting to new audiences, wider audiences, and allowing us to do more fun uh, and more creative uh, co content for you. Uh, so let's get it popping. We'll see you next time.